Okay, we are nearing the end of our time focusing on arrays, and so far we've looked at arrays of ints, uh, arrays of uh, doubles and chars and bools, but we can really, ha of course, have arrays of anything. Um, and so in the notes, you'll see a full example of an array of files. Um, so that would mean that each element of the array is a file star, as in a stream. We could open multiple files and store them all in an array. That is a useful and interesting example to understand. What I'm going to look at here is an array of C string, um, an array of C strings. And so what we'll see is that when we get into arrays of anything, uh, they follow the same basic principles that we've already learned about arrays, but there's a few little quirks and things that we have to kind of start to worry about. What I want to do is write a program that is going to read a number of names and store them in an array. So let's see what we have to do. Let's write this from scratch together. So we need scdio.h. Um, we're also going to need to do some heap allocation here. So we want to include stdlib.h. And when we're dealing with strings, it's a good idea to include string.h even if we're not sure if we're going to specifically use those functions. And for this program, we are going to use this type def um, for a C string, which is an array of fixed size 128. So all we want to do is just uh, read some strings from a file. And I'm going to write to remember to close it later. Now what do I want to do is read in strings from this file and store them in an array. So since I don't know how large this array is going to be ahead of time, that's a good indication that I need to use heap allocation in order to get this thing. So now let's think about what's the type of our array. Um, when we use heap allocation for like a, an int array, what did we do? For an int array, we would say something like int star my array equals calic and whatever the size is, and then size of int. So, you know, maybe the size is 12. So that's how it works for int arrays. And, and in general, if we want to have any type, so let's say type T, what well, we say T star, whatever the type is, we need a pointer to that is going to be the type of our array. And then we need to allocate it based on the size of that type. So now let's apply that here. Um, I need to know what the current size is. So I'll say size equals 10. And because I'm going to be kind of filling this up as I go, um, I need to also remember what the length is, which might be less than the size for an array of strings. And then I'll make this array. So I'll say C string star uh, names equals calic with my current size and size of a C string. And what this is going to do is get the operating system to give me 10 times 128 bytes of memory, actually. And that'll be what I use for my initial array, and, and I'll need to grow it if need, need be. And again, just to be sure that I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and write the deallocation at the same time. Um, and maybe I'll have to move these things around, but it's good to just remember to do that. So then I need a current C string. So like per string, and then I'll say while fscanf f in so I'm going to try to read in a string and keep going as long as I successfully read one in. So we've seen this kind of loop before that's going to loop and read until the end of the file of strings. What do I need to do? Well, I want to add this next one to the end of my array of strings, but I might have to increase the size. So if my current length is equal to the size already, so if we're already at capacity, then I need to grow the capacity 
And again, there's multiple ways of doing this, but basically what you want to do is increase the size. So I'll say size, I'll add 10 more things and then um, use my realloc function. So names equals realloc, names. Remember, we always have the same variable for the array showing up twice there with realloc. And then we have to say the current, the new size times size of C string. Okay, so this is same way we used realloc before, but just now with C strings inside it instead. Uh, so that'll be great. And now I know that the size is going to be bigger than the length. And so I can use stir copy to copy this new string to where I want. So where do I want it to be is at index um, length of my names array. And where is it coming from is cursor. And then I'll increase the length to remember that. So this is going to be st first storing in names zero then storing in names index one, then storing in names index two, etc. So that should read everything in. And uh, let's just check at the end. Uh, one way to check is just let's say what's the third name that we read in. And that should be names index two. And I almost forgot my new line. Okay, so I had a couple little typos there, but I think this is good now. So I'll put the close right here. You can usually do the close right after that loop. And I'll put the freeing of my array at the bottom because I still need to have the names array for when I print this out. Okay, and what I have here, let's, let's test this program. I have a file called names.txt which contains uh, the top 15 names according to the US Social Security Administration from the 2000s. Uh, just a small comment I think is interesting when I look this up. Most of these names are boys' names, and I think, that, so. but this is just ordered by how many people were named that in the US in the 2000s. So I think what this reflects is that parents are more creative when they name their little girls than their little boys. Um, and I, I have no idea what that means. Okay, let's try to compile our program. I screwed something up. Yes, I said open instead of f open. Right, so again, whenever you see implicit declaration of function, in fact, this is telling me what I meant, but that always means either you messed up your function prototype if it's a function that you yourself wrote, or you maybe messed up the name of it if you're trying to have a function that somebody else wrote. Or it could mean that I forgot to include a header file. In this case, I have the SDDIO header file, so I definitely want f open. Okay, and let's try it. So I'll do names.txt. And the third name it says was Joshua. Let's just check. And indeed, Joshua is the third name in this list. So this is our program, it seems to work. We make an array based on the heap of uh, names. I started with length 10 and notice that this list of names, if you look, notice it had 15, so we did have to grow the capacity at some point. That seemed to work out. And, uh, and we are copying each one into that array. And okay, great. You could then do anything that you want to with this list, but now we have a list of C string objects. And let's think about what that looks like in terms of memory, because it's kind of interesting, is I have, again, thinking about like the stack and heap diagrams, we have the stack over here with main. And at the end of this program, there's a few important uh, variables that are going on here. So one is, of course, the size. Let's think about how it starts out, the size was 10, the length was zero. And these are just regular variables that are stored right there inside main. And then there's names, which has type a pointer to a C string. So that points out into memory somewhere where there is a big block of memory that got allocated and it's split into parts 
each one of these parts is 128 bytes for to store a single C string. And then it's divided like that. And so by the end of our program, this size has grown to 20 because we reallocated once and length has grown through 15. And the first few names are Jacob, Michael, Joshua, and Emily. And then it goes on like that. So this is kind of the, that's why we had to free this because all the data for this array is living out in the heap. And this is a good instance of where we would definitely want to think about doing heap based allocation because first of all, each individual name is a little bit, is larger than we would have in a, like a regular int or something, but also the whole list could be quite large. We could have the list of all US baby names or something. And remember we said one of the reasons to use heap allocation is when we might have something that's potentially quite large. And in this case, also, we need to reallocate it because we didn't know what the size would be at the beginning. So we have to increase the size as we run. And uh, again, using heap allocation is a good way to be able to manage that. So this is all good. And um, one of the interesting things that I want you to notice less is that C string is itself really uh, an array type. So what is this part of memory look like? Well, it's 128 bytes that's really split up in between these individual letters with the null byte in there. You know, M, I, C, H, A, E, L for Michael, and then a null byte, and then a whole bunch more empty spots. So when we allocate this, really what we're asking calloc for is just a whole bunch of blank memory. Um, but then be, by using these types, the operating system interprets it in that certain way. And so the what we really got here was an array of arrays. But what makes it work this way in particular, and, and we'll see next an example where it needs to work differently, is the fact that these all have a fixed size. So C string has a fixed size of 128 bytes. And what we'll see is that anything that we allocate as an array, each element of the array has to have a fixed size. So it can be larger, like it can be 128, could be 1,000 or something else, um, but it needs to be fixed. If we need them each to have a different size, that's what we'll have to learn about next.